beautiful people you're welcome thank you so much for clicking my name is bukumi so this christian lady is going to tell us how she converted to islam while looking for evil verses in the quran Woo. let's check it out so i thought i would do a little story time of how i converted a lot of people think that i just converted because i just started posting about it on my tiktok but i actually converted when i was 17 mm, alhamdulillah nice. i'm 21 now i'm married i have a little baby boy his name's Rumi. oh you're um, married wow and yes yeah, so i just want to talk about how i converted so like i said i was 17 um i I had very strict parents and I didn't go out very much. Um, in middle school, I went to private school, a Christian private school. Um, so that set up a really good foundation for studying because, you know, I already had the background biblical knowledge to compare it to. Um, I, in high school, because I was so like isolated, I didn't see friends often and I had very strict parents and everything. I. I just dived into the Bible because, you know, I've always loved God. I've always known that there is one God. I just, I, so I wanted to study the Bible in yep. depth because I'd never finished it front to back. So this is when I finished it front to back. It looked like a highlighted coloring book. It was amazing. Um, my wall was full of Bible verses and I went to school at one of the like required meetups say school I did online school but like I, there's a building we had to meet up at anyways <clears throat> at one of these required meetups and I met a Muslim it's the first Muslim I ever met um and naturally I was like I'm gonna convert this person mm. duh that obviously didn't go very well for me because I did a little uno reverse card on myself but I went to the library and picked up every book on Islam I could find because now I know everything about the Bible right now I'm going to compare it with Quran. the Quran and now I'm going to convert, force this person to convert magically. Um, so I, there was literally a book that addressed like every kind of stereotype that I already had. It was like first page was like, no, jihad does not mean jumping off a building and killing yourself and bombing yourself because God wants you to. I started from there. I started from there. So I picked up these books and started reading. Of course, I read the Quran. And, you know, I, I just kept waiting for, like, some kind of evil verse to validate my point of view of, like, this oppressive religion and whatnot. And every single time I looked for one, I just found one that told me the exact opposite. And things that actually aligned with the Bible to the point where, like, when I was reading the Bible, I was like, why was no one, you know, practicing this? But you're taught, you know, oh, that was that time period. Now, in the New Testament... If you're a Christian, you know that this is in the New Testament, so don't try to tell me it's the Old Testament. In 1 Corinthians 11, there's a verse about veiling. Um, and it's actually kind of aggressive. Like, the, the tone is very aggressive. And it's very, you know, you do this for man because you're the glory of man as a woman. And I always thought that that was a little odd, but I didn't really question it because Christianity, you're taught not to question God. Um... And Islam, it's the opposite because we know that all the answers are in the Quran. So why wouldn't you question God? Why wouldn't you go to him and ask your questions freely and search for answers? And Islam encourages searching for the truth because why would you fear a religion? Why would you fear picking up the Quran and reading it if you know you're correct, you know? And a lot of Christians fear the book as if it's like you touch it. It's like black magic or something. It's like for love. But, you know, so I... I first Corinthians there's that verse but then the the Quran has the verse about hijab obviously and it's very gentle and it starts off not even addressing the women it starts off addressing the men to lower their gaze and I always thought that, that was very beautiful and alhamdulillah you know <clears throat> and just it my mind got blown every day um the fact that there's seven heavens that's not a thing in Christianity that's the like what there's seven levels to heaven like all these things I was taking notes I was waking up at 6 a.m. praying and um, watching Islamic videos and I was so excited I was so excited I was watching tutorials on how to pray um, and following them like side by side writing down the transliteration of the Arabic um, on index cards putting it in front of me and praying with it um, and I was doing this all in secret mind you I eventually my parents found out um, 
my dad was like my best friend so when he found out he just came upstairs and it wasn't really a big deal for me to have you know 50 books on my bed but it was a big deal for it to be the Quran so he was like oh, he was a little skeptical a little. but he was like I, I he was supportive kind of he he didn't really think anything of it he just um he's like you're not gonna wear that hoorah thing in your head right I, I do wear that hoorah thing on my head but anyways he um I I just was like excitedly telling him dad like you know like this is not what everyone says it is this this makes sense like there's logic in this book Islam teaches logic that aligns with God like because in Christianity, you're taught that God is above logic, you know? And I understand that from a point of view. Like, our version of logic is much different than the creator, you know, the person who knows everything about everything. But <clears throat> I, I knew that an omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God, like, that couldn't be three. That had to be one. And I'd always, my whole life, thought of God as one. So this was not a surprise to me, but like when you're Christian, you don't think that there's another route because it's taught in Christianity that if you believe in anything else, you're going to go to hell, which is what makes it so surprising that people think Islam is such a vindictive and, you know, scary, oppressive religion is that Islam was the reason women were given rights. And Islam does not diminish the Bible in any way, shape or form. It just says, you know, the Bible was corrupted by man, and so we have brought this Quran as a seal of the religions. That the Torah was had truth in it, and the Bible had truth in it, but man corrupted it. And if you look at the earliest English version of the Bible, it's the King James Version. Fit for King James. You know, Catholics were the first Christians, and we all know back in the day, they were taking the Bible and saying that the commoner could not read it because they were the only ones good enough to read it so don't you find that a little bit odd like that's not a little bit odd to you so <clears throat> I got to a point where um I was crying to God I was on my knees and I because I think I'm gonna go to hell right I'm like God like please tell me like what to do I I what am I supposed to do and I felt this ease in my heart and I was like, why would God punish me for praying five times a day? Why would God punish me for believing in one God? Why, why would God punish me for being someone who donates to charity? For being someone who fasts to control their desires? Who wears the hijab, which was originally revealed in the Bible to be worn, but people just don't wear it. Like, why why would why and i felt this comfort and i knew that you know this is what i had to do and so i converted with my laptop open and i looked up the shahada and i set it in my childhood bedroom um and soon after that my best friend passed away anya um and i knew that like i knew death was not going to wait for me to convert and so that's I, it was an extremely difficult time for me, you know, like my mom was hiding my Quran, I was hiding practicing Islam, I was following prayers on YouTube, but Alhamdulillah, everything you do as a revert is rewarded, and he's carried me so far, he's given me everything I've asked for, every Tarawi prayer I've prayed has been answered, even maybe the ones that shouldn't have been answered, but every Tarawi prayer has been answered, every Tahajud prayer has been answered, and I find so much pride in being a Muslim and I am so like you can never take that away from me no matter what you can never take away from me that I did that I did that and you know my family has a very hard time with it still um, naturally they're very southern it's it's not very popular to be Muslim and southern but and I'm sure that my old Christian private school uses me as an example of what not to do on the regular <clears throat> but alhamdulillah for everything I'm Muslim now and I'm very happy to be Muslim and I always will be 
and this is my pride and joy. That's it. So I don't have a lot of time, but let's talk about the individual reasons that I converted to Islam. <clears throat> I already said that I read the um, the uh, verse in First Corinthians about wearing the scarf that, and there are some Christians who practice it, you know. But I just thought it was weird that most Christians don't practice it, um, and that the verse was so aggressive in the Bible versus the gentleness of the Quran. Besides that. The seven heavens thing really blew my mind. Um, the fact that Islam tells us that there's seven heavens. Another thing, um, the Big Bang. In Christianity, especially in private school, you're taught, you know, the Big Bang didn't happen. Islam, it says that the Big Bang happened. It says in the Quran, the Big Bang happened. That God created the Big Bang. And that's how the universe was made. And so, it was mind-blowing to see science and Islam align which is not, again, isn't taught in Christianity. You're taught that God is above science. God is above logic. God is above all the things that the, that the Quran talks about and says these are actual evidences that God exists. Another thing, you know, the fact that Jesus prayed with his head bowed down on the ground, and that's how Muslims pray. That, that was, again, very mind-blowing for me. Another reason would be that the prophets in the Bible, my beloved brothers and sisters, this lady she you know, there's, accepted there's Islam and reverted to Islam Quran, after reciting the Quran while she was looking for any evil Bible. verse but, um, to attack I, the Muslims, no to attack Islam that, you know, with this evil verse. But, but talks about what she Abraham found is she found guidance Joseph in the Quran. And Allah Mary subhanahu wa ta'ala said there is guidance in the Quran. Quran will guide you. So, recite the Quran Not. with understanding. And some of these stories Many are Many times right? we just memorize some the Quran and we just like recite from our memorization. We don't understand what we recite. If you want to have seriousness and, and sincerity in your salah, if you want guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to get benefit from the Quran, then understand the Quran. Try to recite the Quran in your own language. Another and you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. Allah will guide you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the straight path. And my dear brothers and sisters, spread and actually, this beautiful message like of Islam. The Bible is a lot more misogynistic. Each and everyone is try to give the Bible is to people. Call to people Quran. towards Quran Islam. Call people to the path the, of Allah. Again, the gentleness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah. Of course, there's and who is better in speech than the one who calls the people towards that Allah, that does righteous deeds, and says, I want from the Muslims. So Allah says, the one who calls people towards Allah is the best person. So, so do the work of da'wah. It's a win-win situation. Yeah. Allah will reward Modesty. you abundantly. That's a big one. Um, praying multiple times a day. I thought that it was beautiful that in Christianity, there's no like prescribed amount of times to pray. Um, Islam, there is. You can obviously choose to pray more, but the fact that relating to what I said earlier, the fact that we pray the same way that Jesus prayed, the way that all the prophets prayed. So that was a beautiful story, guys, you know, letting us understand what led that to Islam. You know, she said she became a Muslim at the age of 17 and she's married now. She's 20 something. I think she's 21. And their journey up began right from school where she was eager to learn about Islam and uh all what she, she was particular about is you know finding a verse that is evil so that she can be convinced and she can convert people from islam to christianity but along the line she saw the quran in a different light not that the the religion is peaceful the quran says a lot of positive things supports women talks about you know the life of prophet muhammad and the rest and about allah and i just love our journey to islam that was a beautiful story guys thank you so much for watching